Welcome back. Um, today, I'm going to try to get Docker running on Windows and try to get Lee words running within Docker on Windows. Uh, I did a couple things before our live stream here. I've installed Docker from Docker Hub or wherever you get it from. Now, apparently, there's an upgrade button. Don't know what that does. I do like pushing buttons. Um, I've already forgotten my Docker ID. I think this is my Docker ID. One second while I key in my password. Sorry, I forgot to turn my mic back on. Uh, but yeah, that's probably not my real fingerprint, but if I had an avatar on Docker Hub, it would probably show here. Um, but for now, I don't know what upgrade here is for. Oh. Uh, my Docker app is up and running. Congratulations, you started the container for the hello world tutorial um to clarify so i had started the docker for windows windows service previously it's shown here in my list of windows services i'd started that i followed the get started tutorial um i guess they don't call it hello world they call it getting started which is a good name uh so then they explain here's the command you just ran d is daemonized run in the background uh, or in detached mode, rather. Um, or demonize. I, I forget how to say it. Port 8080. So this maps uh, the external facing port 80 on localhost, rather my local loopback adapter port 80, to uh, the virtual port 80 inside the Docker container. Docker getting started is the image that we download from Docker Hub. Uh, you can combine single character. Oh, didn't even know that. You can combine all the switches together. Uh, I'm curious because some of them, I assume, other than just P, I assume some of them accept parameters. So uh, I assume ordering does matter, but I don't know. Uh, the Docker dashboard. So before going too far, we want to highlight the Docker dashboard, which gives you a quick view of the containers running in your machine. It gives you quick access to container logs. Uh, get a shell inside the container and lets you easily manage container lifecycle. To access the dashboard, follow... Okay, so I have already have the dashboard open when I alt-tab. This is the dashboard, I think. Um, so, if you open the dashboard now, you'll see this tutorial running. In fact, that's how I navigated to this website. Uh, yeah. Actually, the page I navigated from looked a little bit different. Uh, it showed this button highlighted instead of hiding the button. It's a little surprising to me that the buttons all got hidden, but okay. Um, if you open the dashboard now, oh, I'm sorry, here's the container name. This might have a slightly different container name because of what? Oh, it's randomly created. Good to know. What is a container? Yeah, on the Linux world, uh, when I've tried to do stuff with Docker and Docker Compose, these identifiers, instead of being random nouns and adjectives, would be uh, just random character string identifiers, which is fine. It works. I guess on Windows they want it to be a bit more easy for a user to grasp, even if the user's not a system administrator, um, professionally anyway. So now that you've run a container, what is a container? Um, there's quite a few speeches on YouTube about what a container is and what it isn't. Um, but Docker's implementation leverages kernel namespace, uh, kernel namespaces and C groups, uh, features that have been in Linux for quite a long time. 
So it's really this lightweight wrapper around that concept. Um, so yeah, you could look at speeches, that's fine, whatever. Um, they'll explain it in far more detail. What's a container image? <laughs> Uh, it's a definition of the dependencies, a definition of the configuration, definition of the scripts, definition of the binaries, etc. The same way that if you had like a recipe book, it would talk about what are all the ingredients that are required for a recipe. Um, at least that's my perception. That's kind of like what an image is. It not only is the recipe, but is some representation or ability to obtain those components through the Docker or protocol. So um, our application. Oh, well, yeah, they want to work with this to-do list manager. Man, <sighs> at this point, your development team is quite small. You're looking to build an app to prove out your MVP. No, that's not really where I'm at. Where I'm at is that I have this project that I want to deploy on my system that on Linux I've had so much difficulty accessing from my Windows box and having everything work exactly the way we want. So I'm trying to do this on Windows as a last resort. I had installed the Windows subsystem for Linux so I could even install the Docker container uh, manager for Windows or the Docker service. So yeah, rather than using that app, um, Okay, we've already logged in. Wait, where did my other... Okay, here it is. So, somewhere here, there's a Docker or something or else. So, download... Oh, I need an OJS. Really? Okay. Uh, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, budge... But, okay, um, I guess we'll give this a try, question mark. Let's go, duck, duck, go. Don't lead me wrong. All right. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Sure, whatever. Open the MSI. Yeah, we had Scrabble. Oh. Yeah, keep that. We have Scrabble 3D in our installation previous downloads list because Scrabble 3D is awesome. Um, I was curious what it was, and it connects to some server, I don't know, somewhere on somebody's Raspberry Pi. So you could see games other people are playing on the rare occasions when games get played on other servers. Alright, let's see able to dismiss the download tab. Uh, welcome to Node. Please wait. Yeah, wait. Uh, granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of the software to deal the software without restriction, including without limitation to write, pub, uh, publish, etc. It's provided as is. This is the BSD. Well, it's a similar license as a BSD license. Uh, copyright joint. Oh, interesting. Um, that's kind of interesting. It's right as is. The Node.js license applies to all parts of Node.js that are not externally maintained libraries. So then there's the MIT license for some of these pieces. There's uh, Acorn plugins, which give you permission to use this without restriction as is. Um, C Aries, uh, MIT, well, uh, it's MIT style license. It says copyright, well, yeah, permission to, is granted provided that the copyright is notice is provided, etc. This says MIT license. This previous one didn't say MIT license. Um, so this is copyrighted by MIT, but this is not an MIT license. That's an MIT license. This is... Anyway, basically... Oh my goodness. There's a lot of terms about 
you can use this and you can redistribute the software and you can execute it and it's all as is without liability etc um yep can't reuse google's name etc e uh, <laughs> elastic search lint or es lint uh, mit license all right um uh, don't see anything too suspect here. The BSD3 clause license and MIT license. Woo, that was exciting. Accept the terms. Let's get Node.js. Yeah, add it to my path. Um, yeah, that's not a lot of space. It's required. Uh, some NPM modules are being to compile so we'll need to get chocolatey. This sucks, but we need it. I've installed chocolatey in the past, and it's a rather heavy dependency, and I struggle maintaining it. Um, there was something about uh, chocolatey that didn't work well with my system last time I tried this a year or two ago. So maybe it works better now. Maybe it's just I was trying to install things through Ch Chocolatey and it was just not finding anything I wanted to install. Maybe it works better now, though. All right, so once we've got Node.js installed, the next step is to clone the Leeward's socket repository, CD, Docker Compose up, etc. Now, isn't there? Hmm. I thought there was another way to do this. Um. All right. So we got GitHub for Windows, GitHub Desktop. I mean, we've got other things. Um. Oh, good. This finished installation. This will install Python and the Visual Studio build tools to recompile Node.js native modules. Um, and that the Chocolatey, uh, etc. will be installed as well. This will down, uh, direct to Chocolatey to download stuff, uh, such as the VS uh, workload VC tools, Python, and Chocolatey. This is provided as is. All right, then we have to get permission, and then we have to sign away our firstborn child, and, um, yeah, that's okay. Uh, oh, it's saying I already got Python installed, and I do. Um, I wouldn't mind upgrading, but if we don't have to, I don't mind leaving it, but okay. We're upgrading to Python 3.9.5 for God knows why. <sighs> That's okay. So under semantic versioning rules, that's a permissible upgrade. The leftmost number indicates breaking changes. So as long as the leftmost number doesn't change, that's fine. If the rightmost number changes, that indicates that a patch has occurred to fix some bug or otherwise improve performance or something. Um, new feature additions are indicated by the second number in the semantic version number string. So, theoretically, most software should function the same way with any 3.9, 3.9.2, 3.9.3, 3.9.4, 3.9.5 three, should all function the same way. Chocolatey might need, like, 3.9 instead of 3.8, but, um... Chocolatey shouldn't have really cared one way or the other if we were using 3.9.2 or 3.9.5, unless there were some breaking bug in 3.9.2, and the Python developers say, don't ever use 3.9.2, use some future 3.9 version instead. Um, so that's how semantic versioning works in a nutshell. Um... So, I'm trying to find... I had so many projects here that I don't even need. Um, but the project I'm wanting to work on was Lee Words. 
which is not here. So clone repository from GitHub. Let's search for Lee words. We got Lee words here. Let's clone it. Make that our focus right now. All right, this is still installing Python 3. Oh, okay, good. Okay, and then getting the Visual Studio workload VC tools, which I don't understand why those couldn't have been downloaded in the background at the same time. I'm curious if my stream has died in the middle of this operation. Oh, no dropped frames. Simply incredible. Um, you think between, oh, okay, how am I planning to use this? What? Oh, uh, fuck. Pull requests targeting, yeah, okay, I think the parent project is by intent there. It's really asking if I do a pull request, is it going to be in my own repo or to the parent repo? I really don't intend to do very much inside this tool unless it happens to be the best tool for the job, which I somewhat doubt because I've got other tools already installed. Last time I fired up IntelliJ to try to work on stuff, um, my stream crashed. I might try Atom, but um, for the stuff I'm doing, I don't really know what tool I need. I do have... Uh, some command. I've got git bash installed. So, oh, this is already on the latest version. Wait, don't I have a folder GitHub? Alright. Yeah, that don't look right. There it is. Oh, we don't have Kausei. That's a tragedy. All right, well, what can you do? So we're decorating the unelevated product modifier with the unelevated install telemetry decorator. That's super fancy. Um, we ultimately, what we're going to want to do... Uh, download stable node... Clone Leeward socket cd and run this command docker compose up. Um, once this is all installed for npm. So, yeah, probably should have done this step yesterday or started it yesterday. Um, what can we do now? You can marvel at the Docker tutorial and how great it is. Um, you could probably start downloading the images, honestly. Um, so here um, we've got Lee words. All right, what's the command in Docker to just down? Well, we can't do the, we can do the download thing. Docker is isolated from all the stuff we're getting in the background here installed. So Docker, uh, this is like the most unsearchable thing, but Docker download image. What's the command for that? Docker pull. Docker compose pull. I'm not saying to fire up anything, I'm just saying download it all. Because we're going to need these images soon enough. So let that download. Wait on our PowerShell to do its thing. Uh, we've already. Yeah, I'm not aware that we need. Oh! Alright, there's. Let's restart Docker, uh, GitHub Desktop, because we don't need that version of it. But further, we don't even need this open anymore. 
So we did a Docker Compose poll, which is downloading a lot of stuff. So getting that working in parallel with this other thing. Well, that went faster than expected. What do we do now? <laughs> um, hey, look, our images list contains images. Spiffy. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we do. Oh, we could stop the tutorial. We don't need it. Unable to remove tutorial test. That sounds right. All right, whatever. Um, I'm done with the tutorial. At least I can pretend that I'm done with it. Um, all right, so there's Lee Drafts, Lee Chalker, Lee Chess. Um, oh wait, this is a browser. I wonder I could set my profile images or whatever. Well, I got a fingerprint. There's my super secret email that everybody already knows about. Um, linked accounts. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I mean, I'm already linked. I was just curious what the refresh button did. Let's restate. Oh. All right, let's just connect it. Sure. Uh, to. Wait, what? Yes. If we should cannot access the. Oh, yeah, no, that's fair. I'm not requesting that. Oh, I see. That's the X is for. Hang on. Just connect to my public repo, so if that's okay. Well, okay, fine. Whatever. Uh, something like this. Whatever. So I'm connected to my GitHub account. Um, password, full name, company, location, profile URL, Gravatar, email. Okay. I see. So they use Gravatars, but they don't allow use of avatars. So there's really no point there. Um, oh, I could configure notifications. Um, wow. Yeah, send me failure notifications. Why not? Um, so that's the website. I have not tried to do stuff with Lee Chalker in forever. My other images are not so impressive. All right, so it's PowerShell done. Oh, it is finally done. Way to go, Chocolatey. All right, so Chocolatey's done with its thing. Um, all right, can we stop and remove the tutorial? Okay. Can I forcibly stop it? Is it unstoppable? Alpine Git is in use. Oh, there is a stop button. All right, stopped. Delete. Yes, we are done with Docker tutorial. I see. Oh, that's right, on Linux, they do give these containers creative names, too. Um, but also, remove that from the index, because we're not using the tutorial right now. Probably won't use it for a very long time. 
All right, so the next we want to Docker compose up for um, all the things we pulled. Let's clone this. Wait. Clone the leeward's socket. Okay. Place it at the same level as this repo. Right, so don't miss this step. There we go. CD to this directory. Docker compose up. Um, right, so if you're on Windows and want to use Chrome, you can now use localhost. Instead, use leeward.local. So I've previously set up my hosts file and need to set it again. Um, strange. All right, whatever. Oh, there it is. It's both leewords.local and leewords.localhost. If I turned off word wrap, that become more obvious what's going on here. Um, wait, that's not localhost. So, yeah, what I'm needing to do right now is take all this leeward stuff that points to my Linux box. Um, make that done by my local host entry save. I accidentally closed the file after saving it because I was so excited about hitting the save key, but yeah, it's saved. All right, so next, yeah, well, it says to do this afterward, as if that doesn't matter, but I'm superstitious for whatever reason. So Docker compose up within the leewards directory. All right, Macondo does not exist, etc. Um, I mean, I could download it. Uh, don't know why I need that just to do this, but that's okay. <laughs> Destiny's playing some tourney. Destiny, some we've uh, multi don, very strong amateur shogi player. Uh, he's quite modestly saying he's playing some shogi tourney, as he's probably playing some championship thing. But it's cool that he's live streaming it. I can't spell Destiny's lame for the life of me, um, but you saw it flash there on the screen. Search the shogi category on Twitch if you're curious about him. Um... I think it's D3ST1NY or something. I cannot remember. All right, so this is downloading stuff. Do 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 do. Manamana. Do 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 do. Manamana. All right, so. Stocker scan to scan for vulnerabilities. Nah, we're fine. We trust this. We're downloading all this stuff that, like, I mean, the reason you'd run a scan on someone else's code is if, okay, you trust them in general, but you think they could have made a mistake. Um, which I guess is probably the case with most software you're dealing with. So you're concerned that a mistake could have accidentally introduced a vulnerability. So it makes a little sense to do the scanning, but also if there is a bug, it probably affects them too. So put a lot of trust in folks sometimes. All right. And then after 
that's installed app or step seven there is access the app at uh, the local host or local address. So we'll see how that goes. Now, how does this appear in this listing? Alpine Git is in use. Dev environments. <laughs> yeah, we can get there sometime. Now we don't need this filter anymore. Um, is there not a refresh button? Running. I mean, we see, okay, Lee Words stuff shows up in the images list. So our Docker pull command downloaded all these images. Our Docker compose up is downloading more images, like the front end that are required. Um, I didn't even do this with the detached flag, so that's just going to occupy my terminal and hopefully log to the terminal at the end of this. If you want to end it, add a new front end package, you can run npm install locally in your host OS. So the other uh, advice I was given is that uh, one of the developers, um, or rather the lead developer, has the greatest success with this when they run Docker Compose for everything except the UI, and then in a separate terminal, they run the UI through Docker. Um, for them, that's the way they are able to guarantee the greatest chance of success, and things seem to always work for them. So I'm not sure how I would do that with all these. Like here I've got a terminal, here I've got Docker for Windows, which another developer recommended, um, not on the Windows platform, but they recommended using a Docker UI manager and started trying to do everything through a command line like I try to do. Historically, I've relied on command line use because, I don't know, it's easy to search for documentation when you can just type in an error message into um, a search engine. All right, detected. You shared a Windows file into WSL2 container, which can be performed poorly. Click here for more details. Okay. Oh, so we want the remote WSL extension. Wait. After you enable WSL2 on Docker Desktop, you can start working with your code inside the Linux distro, etc. Uh, what? So the remote WSL extension allows you to work with a remote server and your IDE client is still in Windows. And start working in VS Code remotely to open the terminal to the following. This is not entirely clear to me what this means. Um, if you're already using VS Code, install the remote WSL extension. Allows you to work with a remote server. But what if the server is not remote? Um, I'm so confused. All right, so obviously I don't have VS Code installed just yet, so you gotta get that, I guess. Um, yeah, let's just get the 64-bit Windows installer for user. Just open it. I don't need to install this for all users, just for myself would be fine. Mm. 
I'm getting increasingly comfortable with the notion of putting applications in my user space. I've already reviewed this, not in a live stream, but um, off stream. I've reviewed that policy. It's acceptable. Register code as an editor. Uh, supported file types is too many. Um, might reconsider that at some point. But the other reason I want to get this is because there's an application entitled Dendron, which I'd like to try to start to understand how to use. Although the setup is pretty trivial. All right, all right. Um, I want to opt out of this. Um, yeah, install the recommendations. But we want to disable telemetry reporting. File preferences, settings, search for telemetry. File, Preferences, Settings, Search for Telemetry. That's fine. Settings are already saved, so I don't have to hit a Save button to save the settings. All right, that's good to know. This is recommended because you have the Windows system, subsystem for Linux. I just, why do I need remote WSL? Well, WSL allows you to run a Linux environment directly on Windows without the overhead of a traditional VM. When you install Linux for Windows, you're getting a full Linux environment isolated from Windows. <sighs> mm hmm. Yeah, I believe. It's completely isolated, but it's integrated, but it's isolated, but it's totally integrated, but it's all isolated. Great. Speak both sides of that issue. Um, so we recommend using WSL2 as you'll benefit from performance advantages over WSL1. I don't object, but you're going to have to guide me through it. Yeah, that's... Man, there's a lot of... I have to read. All right. See, if I just had a command line, didn't have any of this gooey crap, I wouldn't have to worry about it. All right, is this installed yet? I think it's installed. So. All right, navigating to, so what? Connected to, by opening a WSL terminal. Now, how do I open a WSL terminal? Like, a decade ago on OS X, it was obvious there was one icon that just said terminal. Now you gotta like find the terminal because you could have different Linuxes installed. So, I mean, I've got git bash, but that's on Windows. You're asking me to not invoke a command terminal, a command line, a command prompt. You're not asking me for PowerShell. You're not asking me for bash for Windows. You're asking me to open a terminal, a WSL terminal. All right, so you could have just told me, like, run the WSL exe command instead of saying opening a WSL terminal, because there's only one. And this is code dot, and of course that doesn't work either. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Do I run the terminal from here? Am I just being dense? Like, there's a video down there mocking my ability but, like, I can't find the terminal thing. Classic. Oh, there's new terminal. There we go. So this is a PowerShell thing. 
<sighs> code dot. Man, that was confusing. So code is not recognized, etc. So we've got a terminal here, but this is not the right, this is not a WSL terminal. Uh, I mean, I know I've installed Ubuntu, but so here we got Ubuntu. Is this a WSL terminal? Hell if I know. Uh, code some okay installing vs code server you could have told me that that's what the code command did but fine so here we got vs code running on the linux instance <sighs> good gravy so we got VS Code running on the other side. Now, what's the benefit of this? The UI runs on Windows and my commands, extensions, etc. run on Linux. You get the full VS Code experience. Um, okay. Let's get started with your first app. Commands. What? So is this running on Windows or is this? No, this says it's running in Ubuntu. Which verifies that we've got that installed, but then, like, what is this remote WSL? How do I exercise this? You can use F1 to get to the command palette or select the. Green remote indicator. All right. Uh, this new window does nothing. The green uh, the, the, is the one to which you are connected. In this case, Ubuntu. Am I connected? Okay, is this actually connected? How do I know if I'm connected? Opening remote. Oh. Uh, okay, fine. Close the remote. So I have to have VS Code running on the other end. So if I'm running VS Code over here, displaying the UI, then I can control that VS Code with another VS Code that's running under Windows. This is so silly. Um, of course that didn't work either. So this extension is so ridiculous, but um, yeah, we don't need this remote running. That extension, I don't get it. All right. Now we've got multiple of these open. One from when I initially ran the code command from this terminal. Well, it's not showing anymore. One from when I launched VS Code prior to all of that. And then this one doesn't even show that it's running on Ubuntu anymore. Um, doesn't really explain what's going on. But fine, apparently I got three of these. So I thought the code command here. Yeah, okay, this is running in Ubuntu. Let's 
we'll figure this out later. But the, all the they were trying to recommend that I do is upgrade to WSL version two, which I'm hoping there's some way to do. Oh, great, right. So on this end of the divide, I disable telemetry. Let me go on the other end of this divide and also disable telemetry. All right, don't know how it figured that out, but. Um... So what got me started on this was a recommendation that I upgrade to WSL v2 for performance reasons, which required VS Code for some reason that I don't understand. All right, I don't even see like where I upgrade the WSL version. Um, Windows WSL to upgrade. How to how do we do this? There's the Microsoft instructions, and there's that code UK address, which I don't want to deal with. Upgrade. Sure. Wait. Oh, so we do this in PowerShell. All right. So I've got PowerShell open, WSL list for folks. It's already upgraded to two. So all the stuff about using VS Code to force my remote environment to upgrade to version two. It's kind of pointless because we're already running on version 2. So that's already up and running. Mission accomplished. But the question that was raised by this tool was that once um, I'm on WSL version 2, then I can improve performance somehow by making the Docker integration use WSL2. So I don't know where we configure the WSL integration version. Not sure how that is specified to improve performance. Um, oh yeah, so it's already checked. So I don't know why I got prompted earlier. Docker, I guess, was confused. At any rate, hopefully that'll straighten itself out sometime. Here we can see I've done Docker Compose up. This terminal apparently is running a local instance of Google's.io. And to verify such a thing, um, at long last, we'll navigate not to this address. Oh. Okay, leewords.localhost. Fine. Whatever. Mission accomplished. Um, so that's step one. So that we're... So we've demonstrated that now we're able to connect um, to a running... I'm sorry, we pulled all the images. We got all the dependencies that we need. Everything is up and running at this point. We don't need the Ubuntu terminal open. 
Um, if you wish to install a new front end package, you can locally run npm install in the host OS in the Leeward's UI. This adds the package, the directory or the whatever to package.json. Then you could do Docker Compose, build the front end, and deploy the front end and such. You can register a user by going to the address and clicking on sign up at the top right. All right, uh, Santa at example.com, Santa Claus, her father, Christmas. Um, man, I need a password. All right, well, we're going to go with the most secure password ever. Father Christmas is not going to cheat. He knows if you've been sleeping. He knows if you're awake. All right, so we've installed a user. So now what? Um, to register a bot, register it the user usual way, then in the database, uh, set the internal bot flag to true. All right, spiffy. So, oh wait, yeah, let me check. So if I hit F12, uh, where's my console? There it is. Hey, there's not nearly as many errors as when I tried to do this over a wider area network. For whatever reason, using Ubuntu and Docker Compose, etc., produced far more errors than this, but the browser and the container, etc., were on different machines. But we do have two errors. One is that this is not well formatted. Dom. Uh, <laughs> multiple field with path no cheating set initial value. Cannot decide which no cheating to pick. Fine. Um, but Father Christmas ain't gonna cheat. So now what? Um, I thought I would run into all the same errors I had on my Ubuntu box. I've not hit those errors, so I guess at this point we'd say mission accomplished on this. I know, well... Let me check if I've got notified on anything. Uh, so I did put a request on. For, oh, nice. They added a license to their chess bot. So here's yet another bot that plays chess I found through Top GG. Um, I considered inviting it to my server, but it was not free software, so I didn't invite it. Now it is free software, so we'll bookmark it and consider inviting it to my Discord server. Um, cool. But yeah, here... Oh! I missed a few things. Um, add a profile photo, new password, all chats, some match request, all these ways. So thanks to Andy for verifying this. I suppose the next logical step... Um... Yes, yeah, so this was my pull request attempting to fix um, the open issue about capitalization of various contexts. Um, so, can I build the front end? <laughs> can I check out my front end and build it? I guess is the question. So, yeah, if I... Oh, like they were saying you have two separate terminals. For now, let's have two separate terminals. So can I open a new terminal here? All right, so let's do Docker Compose up again and not be an idiot this time. Just leave that up and running and try not to get too distracted by it. Um, and then see documents, GitHub, Leewords, 
uh, we word CY. Um, and then here we want to follow whatever the instructions here are for compiling um, UI. To run npm install locally in the host operating system. What does host mean here? I guess they mean not in the container. Um, so, okay, that's already up and running. Let's we'll leave that up and running again. Try not to get too distracted by it. See if this actually does anything. <laughs> Do I have an old Node version despite having just installed Node a second ago? I guess I do. Hmm. Wow. You'll try to do your best with it. If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> try, try again. Oh dear. Man. I mean, I appreciate that, like, they're being honest. That's not a very professional, hey, let's try this thing. That kind of the uh, sentiment doesn't fly very well in a corporate environment, although perhaps it should. Um, yeah, 14 Domino and EK are uh, thankful for my contributions. All this is not the hardest thing to develop. Oh, also, yeah, perhaps I wanted to check out a different branch name. Yeah. All right, so npm install, I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's get sentence case. There we go. Don't know if I have to do npm install again or not, but let's do it again just to be safe. Um, this adds the package. Then you can do docker compose build front end to rebuild the front end and install the package into the internal node modules directory. Internal referring to your local Docker instances node mo wait, no. I don't understand the relation here between NPM and Docker. Um I think node modules is on the host OS file system. I'm not sure how that gets shared. Even though there was a Windows file share, I'm not sure what it was that got shared. But um, hopefully that share includes the node modules directory. And when I do stuff, stuff gets changed. I don't know. We'll find out. So let's make these code changes uh, here. Grep wrl add a profile profile photo in source. Hey, we found the file. Now what we do is we want to vim that and then we search for profile photo If there's add profile photo, and I'm done, and then we go over to new password, and we say that's yeah, and then there's confirm new. Wait, that's the lab. All right, so we found this file. We found confirm new password over here. 
Um, and then this tail thing that's... wait. Alright. Whatever. Um, so let's get diff source to see what files I just edited. There's the new password modal, the password change modal. At least I assume those are modals, the TSX things. Because I don't know what a TSX is. Um... But yeah, apparently this label element should be in set tense case. Um, so then we want to edit whatever file contains the phrase all chats. Uh, all chats, there it is. That's the only file of its kind. And then send match request. So... There it is. Get add source. Get log. Alright. Um... Git commit m. Um, you know, I'm actually curious. Uh, okay, so this actually does use the same email address uh, as the other machine I was developing on. So I don't have to set up a new identity. Um... Yeah, it's fine. I see other people use their Gmail accounts. I can still certainly use mine. I don't need to change it right now. At some point I should switch that so my identity uses... Um, well, this might... Hmm. 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 Yeah, I wonder if I ever want to mask my identity through GitHub. Uh, it doesn't matter. Gmail's the best place to reach me. Trying to notify me through GitHub would just complicate everything. Um, oh, right, so instead of just pushing it, um, so I can do npm install locally. Which I think takes this package, the LeeWords UI package, and produces a node module out of it, including all my latest changes I just wrote a second ago. And assuming it does that, then if I follow these remaining steps, if I do docker compose build front end, and then restart the front end, um, I think that should work, maybe, and be able to go to any of the places mentioned in this GitHub issue to verify, like add a profile photo, um, come on, you can do it. Really what I'm more curious about, now that we've got VS Code connecting to a remote something, why can't I do that same thing connecting to my actual Ubuntu non-WSL thing? Like, what's so different about that Ubuntu as opposed to WSL2 Ubuntu that, like, I should be able to run this Docker Compose and all these other tools should still work in Ubuntu. And I should be able to connect to it from Windows. I shouldn't have to host my server on the same physical instance. 
Anyway, um, all right, so I should be able... Here's the Docker dashboard. None? All right, Leeward's front end. Uh, run it? Sure. All right, Cranky Mon... Cranky Montalcini. Exited with one. React app rewired start. Alright, so my attempt to rebuild failed because module not found on something. I mean, I think this is what I was seeing on Linux too. Cannot find Leeward's UI config overrides. No, this is different than what I saw in Linux. So, what now? I have no idea. Oh, well, hang on. We got a running front end that was created a minute ago, it's despite that other strange error. So, I've got my browsers. Yeah. I don't know how this navigated, but probably gave me a notification to refresh. Let's view our profile. In fact, that view profile modal shows that I'm not using my latest instance. But other contexts where I'd expect to see stuff would be add a profile photo and settings personal info. So settings personal info, personal info, so I lowercase the I on info at their request, add a profile photo. So this is not using my latest image. Um, maybe this front end failed because there was already a front end running? No, okay, this is running the wrong image ID. That's what's going on here. <sighs> So, how do I stop the front end? No, this is trying to run my latest... I don't know. I am so confused. Can I run... Yeah, I'm missing dependencies to run my latest front end. But also... Not sure why I'd need a thing called config overrides. This is, none of this makes sense. All right, can I stop this front end? Remove it. Rebuild the front end. Start it up in a new terminal, etc. Um. Yeah, whatever. So Leeward's front end is already in use, but the use it's in is not running anymore. Is there another front end running? If no front end is running, then how do I have a front end? I guess this is the front end that's still running as of some number of minutes ago. Words. No, that doesn't look like it's the front end. Like here we have the compiler that's in use. Oh, I'm sorry, these all just say Leewards on them. Yeah, I don't know what that identifier is. Um, but I could stop this, whatever it is, although it's not started. I. Can I view the log of whatever it is? Not really. That's great. All right, I seem to be stopping everything for I don't even know why. Um, did I just stop the universe? Yes, all these processes are stopping now. Dev environments.
<sighs> Containers offer the promise of making things simple, but do they ever deliver on that promise? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe if you're using the right tools. Okay, so I must have closed the Leewards one proxy. Um, wait. Alright, so fine. We're going to run... That's Leewards again. I don't think it's going to use my latest... Yeah, it said recreating the frontwards thing, or the front end UI. Um, hopefully that offers some promise. I'll try to refresh or force refresh this page or navigate to other pages or something. Wait, am I, am I still on my dev instance? I am. So despite all those other strange errors being reported. Yeah, I'm confused. I'm so confused. Because I can code stuff and other people can test it. But seemingly the only way for me to be able to test things. I'm sorry, test code changes to the front end. Um, seemingly the only way to do that. Oh. Okay, well, I'm mistaken. The black magic has worked its magic now. This page is refreshed, and finally this is showing what I've coded. Hooray! Mission accomplished. Alright, well... Git log, git push, get her done. All right, so, anything else? I, mean, I could skim through here. Just looking for capitalization questions. Um, So, secret features, blocked players list. Yeah, it seems that all those capitalize as expected. You help chat, chat. Uh, you can start a new chat, five player, play a computer. All this is sentence case. All this is sentence case. My confusion here is like this here looks an awful lot like a title to me. And yet it is presented in sentence case. Compare this to say, well, Docker doesn't capitalize anything. That's actually pretty amusing. Um, yeah, in fact, OBS doesn't either. Yeah, heck if I understand anything these days, but I was going to point, like, Microsoft Word capitalizes the word Word. Microsoft Excel capitalizes the word Excel. Create a game. Game is not capitalized, but this is the way they want it, so, okay. We'll see how other people think about that, but at least there's a consistent uh, look and feel across all the pages. I'm still confused about, um, not that request, but what's the simplest? I don't want all this stuff running on my Windows box. I'd rather run most of this on an isolated Linux box. Even if that takes a little more setup work, I'd rather have all the development run not on my Windows system. Because WSL 2 is just such a delight. Um, like, if I want free and open source software, I don't want to have a reliance or dependence on Windows. And 
Okay, maybe I'm not thrilled with Canonical at the moment, but um, it is a Microsoft alternative. Now I'm dependent both on Microsoft and on Canonical, which not really the universe I want to be in for developing software. So, plus, yeah, anyway, if possible, I'd like to start migrating some of this stuff I just set up onto my Linux box, but we just spent 90 minutes getting this all set up. Really don't have the gumption to go through all that right now. So, yeah, um, mission accomplished. We got our first pull request. It's likely to be accepted. And we could take a look at some of these other things. But no, some of these concerns, like some boards are slow during exam, and immediately it comes to mind, well, the way I'm replicating this would involve, here my browser is on the same machine as the server. Like, if I want to do a real test, I want the server to be one machine and my client to be a different machine because that's um, how the real world works with this application. They deploy it to AWS. I don't want to do that, but I just would rather not have the application server on my client PC. So if I'm trying to do a real test, I would rather separate those parts. If I'm trying to do development, that's one thing. Maybe I'm okay with that. But like, if you're reporting a bug and you want this to be supported, I mean, some developers have the luxury of being able to push to AWS. I'm really not the greatest fan of Amazon at the moment. I'd rather do it myself on my own box, isolated from my Windows box. But what can you do? What can you do? Yeah, so... We'll deal with what we've got right now, but continue trying to seek something better. Um, well, that's interesting. We could see account of pull requests. That is nice. Are there other things tag good first issue? No, just this one. Previously, some errors. Triple challenge is not properly rated. I'm not. How would this be a good first issue, by the way? Um, how, yeah, this seems like not necessarily, uh, but okay, say it was fixed. How did this get fixed? If this were a good first issue, ah, game end reason equals triple challenge. Yeah, see if the developer knew that, they could fix it, but, um, I don't know how a developer just getting started with the project would know that. There's some things that are maybe easier to find than others, so. Uh, I did put a feature request out there, which might help with that kind of progression in the future. Um, maybe bot accounts would somehow help with this kind of integration too. I'm not sure what kind of a bot would make that easier, but yeah, just continue to watch the issues list, see if there's like really easy stuff for a person that's not familiar with the entire build stack or how to troubleshoot it, which is, you know, there's probably not a lot of options out there. Oh, yeah, I did put this out here at the same time Lee Chess um, opted out of Flock, had recommended that uh, other open source projects do the same. I might have exaggerated in the title just slightly for dramatic effect, but uh, I thought it was still appropriate. Um, yeah, I would like to know if... Um, oh. Okay. Yeah, and the code base I'm just referring to, the word blind does refer, or is referred to in the code base. And I would think that blind should actually refer to um, support for screen readers as opposed to blindfold. I think in my mind that's an important distinction. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, this thing was relatively easily reproducible. Um, 
that clicking a play shows its definition, but it would be prefer preferable to not display the definition right on top of an important space on the board that's occupied by Word. Uh, but yeah, I think for our purpose of understanding Docker, we demonstrated that we're able to get uh, the Docker instance running with Redis, with Postgres, and um, all this other stuff that here's the proxy web server traffic. Um, there's the Lee Words backend app. Here's some bot something or other. So we were able to get um, these images downloaded and running uh, within 90 minutes, uh, including having to download Chocolatey and Node.js and some other stuff. So, um, yeah, maybe for a person uh, looking to do this asynchronously where they might say, I want to download some stuff, I want to get up, walk away, do some exercise, I don't know, um, have a nice dinner or something, and then come back and download and install some Windows tooling. Um, that might help. If you're trying to do this kind of installation on your own, I might recommend skipping the um, VS Code step. That seems to really slow me down a lot. So if you're trying to go for that PB or world record on uh, Lee Words installation from scratch on Windows, whatever Windows version you want, um, yeah, to improve that speed, yeah, I would recommend uh, skipping the VS Code step. Otherwise, um, yeah, this is far simpler than coding something from scratch. That's much appreciated. I was able to verify we are using WSL version 2, so whatever performance thing that this Docker tool was alerting me about has been resolved or will be resolved next time my system restarts, which is good enough for me. Uh, I did successfully authenticate with Docker Hub, which I previously created an account on. Um, I, once I get a firmer understanding how some of this works, I might recommend its use um, to leech us folks, but uh, there's much I still have yet to understand about getting leech us and all its dependencies running from Docker images. Um, but yeah, theoretically somebody, I mean leech us is mostly developed by a handful of developers that do tons and tons of coding. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, so with that in mind, um, yeah, making it accessible for anyone to develop might not really be of much value at present, but in the future, being able to quickly download and run an instance of Leechus might be desirable. And Docker might somehow ease that, but we saw my own challenges just with this other framework trying to make code changes and get them effected through this container mechanism and I don't really get it right now. Maybe by Christmas I might get it. We'll see. But yeah, also I did manage to think up a new username, um, so that was exciting. Uh, I had to think of that on the fly, but I was thinking of C.S. Lewis and Father Christmas, so that's where that came from. It's not referenced to anything else. If you're curious where you can get this code base and instructions, this is all at uh, Cesar's link, domino14 slash leewords. Does not actually fork from the Leechus code base, but is inspired by the direction of the Leechus project. And uh, yeah, I like the fact that this is used an AGPL license uh, that if any user accesses the server, that user can demand the source code. That's the policy here, that's the license. So if you're making your own custom version of this site, you still have to make source code available to all users. You can't take away the user's freedom to get that source code, copy the code, and make their own changes to it. So, um, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed this Windows on Docker experience. Glad we were able to get this quick demo up and running. Uh, and the site, of course, is woogles.io.
So if I navigate to leewords.localhost, this shows their imagery. Um, yep, so this is Googles.io. Um, sorry, I don't have a dramatic ending for that, but hopefully um, this is illustrative of how person not totally familiar with all these technologies can get things up and running fairly quickly. Hope you enjoyed that.